Index funds have helped transform the investment outcomes of millions of people around the world. The man most often credited with instigating the indexing revolution is Jack Bogle, the late founder and chief executive of the Vanguard Group. But another major player was John Mac McQuown, who has died at the age of 90. In the late 1960s and early 70s, McQuown helped to develop the first institutional index funds at Wells Fargo. In his highly acclaimed book about the growth of indexing trillions, Robin Wigglesworth from the Financial Times described McCown's vision for applying scientific rigour to asset management as revolutionary, laying the groundwork for the index funds that would eventually challenge the supremacy of active stock pickers. So what does Mark Hebner, founder of Index Fund Advisors, make of John McCown's achievements? How influential has he been? So, Mark, when we think of the birth of indexing, we tend to think of Jack Bogle. But actually, Matt McQuown was a few steps ahead of Bogle, wasn't he? He sure was. You know, Mac started the management science group at uh, Wells Fargo in the early 70s. He actually came up with the first index fund in 1971 for the Samsonite Luggage Company. But he had started, I think, several years before that. Uh, trying to apply uh, science to investing. Ironically, that's our new series that you've been working on, The Science of Investing, I think we call it, right? So he uh, had brought together a number of academics uh, to consult with him and to work with him. Many years later, six of those individuals ended up winning the Nobel Prize. Just amazing. Um, and when David Booth of Dimensional had the idea of starting a small cap fund and, and starting dimensional fund advisors, one of the first things he did was fly out to San Francisco and meet with Mac to get his guidance because uh, David had been an intern and had worked with uh, Wells Fargo in the years in which they developed that first index fund. So they had a close relationship. And uh, after David met with Mac, uh, Mac agreed not only to uh, join David and be on his board, but also to help put, to put together financing to start uh, Dimensional Fund Advisors. After he started the first index fund, he then started creating more index funds at uh, Wells Fargo. And then that company was sold uh, and became uh, Barclays Global Investors, I believe it was called. And then that, was sold, uh, and they developed the iShares, and then that was sold to BlackRock, and now is the primary business of the largest money manager in the world. I think they just crossed 11 trillion, and this all goes back to Mac, uh, an amazing, really, individual, and really a founder of this whole passive movement of investing that you and I uh, have spent so much time trying to educate the world on. I know, Mark, you've read Trillions, the, the, the book by the FT's Robin Wigglesworth on uh, the growth of, of, of index funds. What I find really interesting in that book is how when Mac and David Booth were working on the first index funds for institutional investors in the late 60s and early 70s, um, that they, they actually encountered a fair amount of antagonism, didn't they? Even from colleagues within Wells Fargo. T tell me about that. It was in the trust department. They were running trusts uh, for individuals. And they're before uh, Mac got there, they were all doing stock picking and what we call active management today. And when he came up with this idea uh, based on uh, the efficient market hypothesis and Eugene Fama's work, Eugene Fama was also uh, quite active in the development of all this and, in fact, recommended David Booth uh, to go out and work with Mac. Anybody who is a active in their investing style does not want to hear that 
prices are fair and there aren't under or overvalued securities, which is what their goal uh, is to find these under or overvalued securities. And so it was a it was kind of an insult, really, to those who spent their life uh, researching stocks and trying to, you know, beat the market. Uh, but at that time, there were no really uh, index funds to compare to. There were some benchmarks out there that uh, people were looking at. Uh, but uh, anyway, Mac was in the place uh, at the right time and brought together the right team to document uh, the logic behind creating uh, this index fund. And uh, the other interesting point here is the son of the owner of Samsonite, or at least the president of Samsonite, went to the University of Chicago. And when he came back to Denver, uh, he told his dad, hey, you've got money in this pension fund. We should really index this. And uh, he somehow made contact with Mac, and that ended up being their first account uh, at Samsonite Luggage. Ironically, when I was in the nuclear pharmacy business, about that time, we were one of the largest Samsonite cu customers in the U.S. because we used their little briefcases to deliver radioactive pharmaceuticals to hospitals. So when I first heard that story, I went, what? <laughs> we were right there probably helping fund their pension fund. <laughs> As you say, Mark, his passion, Mac's passion, was... Um, applying scientific rigor, if you like, to investing. He described himself at one point as a, as a data dog. <laughs> How did that set him apart from others in the industry at the time? Well, I think back then there was little science applied to investing. People were kind of using their intuition, uh, past returns, recent past returns, which you also just did a video on. Um, and it was just a total different uh, point of view that it still exists today for the majority of investors, unfortunately. But Mac was shining the light and, and bringing the light to uh, these ideas of market efficiency and diversification uh, of course, Harry Markowitz had done his research way back in 1952, uh, but these things take a long time. They didn't even give Harry his Nobel Prize until 1990, if you recall. But all of these things were being taught at the University of Chicago. Um, Mac went to Northwestern, but it was there in Chicago, and I'm not quite sure how that connection came about. But uh, anyway, they did connect and they did start the first index fund. By the way, it was an equal cap weighted index fund based on the New York Stock Exchange. And after all the turnover that was created by equal cap weighting, uh, they, I think within two or three years, developed a market cap weighted fund based on the Standard & Poor's index. And by the way, Jack Bogle, uh, before he started his fund, had heard about this, called them up and asked for help as to how to set up his index fund at Vanguard. I understand you actually met Matt McQuown, Mark. What sort of person was he? I spent lots of time with Mac. I, I don't know exactly how many times we met. If I was to guess, at least five, six times. And we attended a conference up in Napa, and we had the wonderful uh, opportunity to go visit Mac's house uh, which was just incredible. I'm also uh, interested in astronomy, and Mac had this huge telescope that was uh, set up in this little island with a little with a lake around it and a bridge that went out to this telescope. I'll never forget it. And uh, it was a you know academic level telescope that uh, astronomy uh, professors from and students from all over the world were logging into that telescope and using it uh, for their research. But also, he had this incredible uh, farm where uh, he basically brought back some of the things he ordered in his childhood. This is a book about his farm called Stone Edge Farm. And he also has a winery up there. And uh, this 
cookbook when they came out with it uh, won an award for the best cookbook that year. And I, unfortunately, I don't have the exact uh, uh, entity that awarded him for that. But um, we spent the whole afternoon and the evening with Mac. Uh, he was also a car collector um, and he had these incredible cars and we had a big dinner in his garage. They set up all these tables. And so uh, we hung out there and I got to spend uh, s several uh, times that day. I got to chat with Mac and discuss uh, his uh, founding of these index funds, uh, his work at Dimensional and what we were doing at IFA. He was a, f a fan of my book uh, on several occasions. He mentioned that to me and he was just the nicest guy. You know, you meet all kinds of people in the in this business and some are kind of a little or overly academic, I would say. He was the opposite of that. He was so friendly and just uh, would look you right in the eye and made you feel that he was really paying attention to what you were saying and connecting with you. And uh, he had that, uh, I don't know, uh, he, he grew up in the Midwest. So a lot of people say, you know, that friendly Midwestern uh, farmer attitude. He, he grew up on a farm. And that's why he ended up uh, wanting to do this later. You talked about his passion. I do think ultimately his real passion was in his farming and his wine, but uh, he certainly uh, had a business passion for these other areas. A very successful businessman like you, a, a serial entrepreneur as well, a remarkable man. Final question, Mark. In his obituary in the Financial Times, Robin Wigglesworth says this, if there was a true father of passive investing, then it was Mac McQuown. Now, <laughs> some Bogle fans might disagree with that. Is it fair? <laughs> I think it is fair, uh, you know, from all the things that we just discussed. I mean, if you just look at the dates, I think it was 75, late 75, that Bogle introduced uh, the first retail index fund. So the big distinction here is that Mac didn't develop a retail index fund. It's what we call the institutional index fund. But he created the methodologies and, and really created the idea. By the way, Rex Sinkfield was at American National Bank, and there's a little debate as to which one of those actually came out first. But um, I think Mac uh, might have beat him by just a little bit. Uh, I, if Rex, you're listening, sorry. <laughs> I know they, they go back and forth on that issue. Uh, but, um, and ironically, after David had talked to Mac, they decided they were going to call Rex and get him involved. And it was really the three of them, with along with Fama, that started Dimensional. But, but I do think it's fair, and, uh, and Robin and I have spent a lot of time uh, researching these individuals, you know, all the way uh, back to the beginning, as did Peter Bernstein in his uh, also wonderful book called Capital Ideas. Um, I like to think of Robert, Robin's book as, as a wonderful update and expansion of what Peter Bernstein did in his book called Capital Ideas. But, but yes, uh, he is, I think, the founding father of the index fund and the concept, uh, which, which he really learned from all of these academics. I think I read there was almost 60 uh, academic consultants and employees that were working on this project. And so um, we have to give him credit as the, uh, I'll call the founding father of the index fund. But Bogle brought it to the public and it's why uh, in the public realm, uh, he gets credit for that. And, and speaking of the criticism, you know, Bogle was famously, his funds was famously called the Bogle Follies because of all the active managers who refused to believe that average would do better than the active manager. <laughs> so, but of course, uh, we've now learned that that is the case. And that is what led Mac uh, to this idea is this really deep research and really the application of statistics. That's what the academics do 
And when I'm talking to prospective clients, if they have a knowledge of statistics, I know I'm, it's, the whole conversation is going to go a lot easier. And so it, that's what data is all about, right? The data dog is somebody who has a good handle on statistical methods and can analyze this data in a way that will help them uh, design products and, and help them design ideas and extract from that data something useful for uh, investors or for whoever. And all, basically all empirical research needs based on a st statistical analysis of data. Mark, that's a wonderful tribute to Matt McQuown, a man who did so much for investors around the world. Thank you very much. We'll miss you, Mac. Rest in peace.